All right. Yeah. So here's our carbonic anhydrase reaction. Um, so the enzyme that catalyzes this is called carbonic anhydrase. It's not pictured here. We're just showing the progress of the reaction. So uh, the enzyme is, is basically represented here by the arrows specifically this part. So carbonic anhydrase catalyzes this. Um, the reason doesn't also catalyze this portion is because carbonic acid H2CO3 is an acid. So once it hits water, it dissociates and donates a proton. So this portion is just dissociation of an acid, <clears throat> just like in chemistry. So with regard to carbon dioxide transport in the plasma, This reaction is happening inside of the red blood cell. <clears throat> so this comes from the peripheral tissue. So when you see the diagram of gas exchange during internal respiration and you see the CO2 moving from the cells of whatever tissue we're in into the red blood cell, that's where this CO2 comes from. And then carbonic anhydrase takes that and whatever water is laying around and turns it into carbonic acid, which immediately dissociates into a proton and bicarbonate. So this proton causes the pH inside of the red blood cell to drop and thus oxygen to dissociate from hemoglobin. And then the bicarbonate. So notice we have CO2 here. So this CO2 is now has been transformed into bicarbonate. So where does the CO2 go? It gets rearranged, it gets dismantled partially, and it ends up as bicarbonate instead. And then this goes to the plasma in exchange for a chloride ion. So that's how CO2 is carried in the plasma. In the plasma, there is almost no dissolved carbon dioxide. So like, you know, you would have in a soda, for example. So it's, if, if any more than the amount that is dissolved in there was, you would have fizzy blood, not ideal. Um, so instead it's carried as bicarbonate, which also performs an important buffering function. So if your plasma pH begins to drop, 
the protons that are causing that pH change can combine with bicarbonate and shift the equation back to the left. Um, basically, it allows you to mop up any excess acid in your plasma. So that's carbon dioxide being carried in the plasma, primarily in the form of bicarbonate. There is a small amount dissolved into the plasma directly, but not very much. So this is about 70% or so. All right, so next we'll talk about carbaminohemoglobin. Just one second to rearrange something. All right, so if we look at hemoglobin and I'm gonna draw it sort of poorly, we've got two components of hemoglobin. I'm just arbitrarily drawing the subunits as squiggles. Nope, that's not different enough. Let's try this one. So the globin chain is a protein, which means that it's just a rope of folded up amino acids. And then at the center of each of these, we've got a little heme group. And the heme group is a pigment molecule. So it's an organic compound. Um, it almost looks kind of like a flower. So it has this flower petal type arrangement of the uh, sterile rings. Um, so it's a And the reason it is reddish appearing is because it has ferrous iron. So oxygen goes on the heme group. Carbon dioxide binds non-covalently to the globin chains. So when carbon dioxide is bound non-covalently to the globin chain portion, we call that compound carbaminohemoglobin. And I'm running out of room. There we go. Long word. So let's break that word down. Amino refers to the amino groups of the amino acids. And then of course, hemoglobin is named for the whole molecule. So what this means is, and this is a piece that a lot of students end up missing for some reason, um, it means that hemoglobin can carry 
CO2 and O2 at the same time. because CO2 and O2 adhere to the hemoglobin molecule on different parts. So it's totally possible and even common to have a hemoglobin molecule with four oxygens bound to it, so four O2, and then also be carrying some carbon dioxide. The CO2 binds to that amine group, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so if you let me just figure out which part of this I can erase. So every amino acid has this form, which is, come on. So the amino group is where the CO2 sticks, typically. And that is partially because this has a positive charge and then the carboxyl group has a negative charge. Okay, so yeah, that's how hemoglobin is transported. Any questions on that before we sign off for the day? No, that makes nope. it more understandable. Okie dokie.